What's going on guys? Well, we wanted to show you guys the before. Uh, we are scheduled to pour concrete for all of our foundation walls tomorrow at nine. And they have just a couple spots left to finish up. What they're doing today uh, was putting all these top two by fours on, which are gonna strengthen our top edge. Um, everything is planned out perfectly to a T. Um, we have a bunch of penetrations that they had to add for all of our plumbing. Um, this is the back bedroom. You can kind of really see it now. Um, that structure or area is going to be the garage. So that's going to be just capped with concrete. And that structure is going to be our dog trot. So that's going to be capped with concrete. Um, they basically just have um, a couple more uh, top boards to put on over in this corner. They've been using, they left this corner open so they can get in and out of here. Uh, but they'll finish that up in the morning and um, run some strings and some kickers and then they are ready for concrete. Uh, we are excited to see um, a pump truck come in here and have a big boom that's going to just go around the whole uh, perimeter of the house from just one spot. It's going to be really cool to see. So we're really excited. Oh, <laughs> Ryder hit the string. <laughs> come on, buddy. Uh-oh, were you in the pond? Mr. Man. <laughs> Did you guys see the barn? All right, big day number two. Uh, concrete pump truck just arrived. They're getting set up now. The concrete truck should be here in about 20 minutes or so. And they're just gonna pull this pump truck right up to the house. And uh, guys are all getting it ready right now. And then they're just gonna pump all these uh, four foot foundation walls with that. So it's gonna be really cool. I'm excited to show you guys that. Um, everything looks great. They're ready to go in uh, 20 minute, uh, 22 minutes. Concrete truck is here. They're just adding a couple extra kickers everywhere. They think is gonna have a little bit of pressure, but um, really cool. I'm really excited to see this pump truck work. The way they were talking is they wanna start at this outside spot and do all the far away stuff. And that way, if they do run short of concrete in the pump truck, they could easily get a uh, another concrete truck to come up and pour the close stuff. Um, so the, the pump operators, very knowledgeable and knows you know all the little secrets and tricks and stuff like that so they're gonna need about 35 yards of concrete talking with the foreman and uh they, they have four trucks coming so they should have plenty of concrete and then, uh they'll uh, get going so what they basically do is they just bump the uh, uh truck as close as they can to that chute in the back of the pump truck and they basically just dump the concrete right into that chute. And then that chute will pump it through these lines and then they can just guide that nozzle all the way around to do all the walls. It just makes it such a clean, um, good job. And um, they're gonna actually use, I was talking to the foreman last night. He was here really late trying to get everything perfect. And um, I was telling him that we've used um, a Sawzall without a blade on the walls just to kind of vibrate a little bit because when you put a vibrator down into a wall like that what happens is is the aggregate goes to the bottom and you don't really want that you want that to stay floating in the within the wall to give it strength and so he's going to try the sawzall trick so i'm excited to see how he likes that because i've seen a lot of people do that i know a concrete guy who's used that trick before he's the one that told me about it and um, so mark's going to try to see how that sawzall trick works just instead of 
you know, a lot of guys just hit it with a hammer. So we're gonna see how that works. I'm, I'm excited to see how he thinks that that turns out for the product when they strip these forms, which of course we'll show you guys, so. Fun begin.
right, they're just about wrapped up. Um, they're not, all they have to do now is just put in their anchor bolts um, around the perimeter. You see they pretty much have the house part just about done. Uh, there is a couple pieces of rebar you can see kind of sticking up in that center section. And that's where our dog trough is going to be. And that's going to be a concrete floor. And what I like was for them to put the pieces of rebar in there, have them just sticking up long, and then we'll bend those over, and then we'll tie all of the rebar reinforcement for that poured concrete floor. We'll tie those into the walls, and that way, um, it'll everything will be locked together. It'll just make it really, really strong. Uh, so now they just have to go through and uh, screed off all the tops of the forms, and then they are going around and. Uh, leveling each spot to make sure that it's perfectly level before they drop their anchor bolts in. So basically there's just a little bit of cleanup and then those guys will be out of here. <laughs> and hot. Mr. Man. Are you just taking a cool down? Okay, come on, let's go. Hey, what's going on guys? Well, Mr. Man and I are out. Uh, we gave him a shave down yesterday. <laughs> Looks actually pretty good. But uh, 
Uh, just wanted to come out and talk about these walls before they take the panels down, uh, the forms for the concrete. Uh, just kind of wanted to go over like the whole process of how they do it. I really didn't talk much about that, um, but uh, everything turned out super nice. Uh, they have a little bit of work to do, uh, smoothing a couple areas out that they didn't get to, uh, but and putting a couple extra anchor bolts in because they ran short, but they'll just epoxy those in uh, totally fine. But um, basically, this is the wall. Um, here's our eight inch poured wall. And these are the ties that they use that they lock the plywood panels in before they pour. And basically what they, what they do is these washers on each side of this panel and they hold the form so that it's eight inches all the way. And then they come by after they lock these forms together. It's kind of tricky to get this to go. Uh, and then they just put these, these ties right here down. And so they, these forms are just sticking by like this. There's no concrete in there. And they basically just drop, drop this down and then they just hammer these down until they're tight. And then that keeps the form to be eight inches thick. And then those ties just run the whole length of the wall. I'm excited to show you guys the final product of how the wall looks. We can start adding our footing drain and then um, we could seal the wall after about seven days of it curing. And then we can start doing a little bit more of our plumbing for our water catchment system. Uh, we have to run a drain line uh, for the sewer for the back bedroom behind the house we have to run that over to the main part of the house so that could all be tied into the sewer and then we have to run a main water line from our water tanks and so um, once we get all that stuff done we can backfill and then these guys will be done uh, with their end of the deal and then it's going to be just all Tanya and I um, and start framing framing the house uh, I'm really excited I can't wait to start um, we've been you know thinking about this plan for like well over a year so I've been running around in my mind so I'd love to start actually um, putting it together so it'd be really fun so just thought I'd show you guys that and um, when they uh, get all these forms back off I'll show you guys the final product. Hey guys! Hey what's going on? So the foundation is finished. Yes, it's all finished. Let's head on inside and take a look. All right, before we jump inside, I just wanted to show you guys how the garage and the dog trot look right now. Uh, these will all be backfilled and then a layer of gravel, kind of like what's in the crawl space, is going to be put on here about four inches thick. And then there's going to be concrete poured in both of these. You can kind of see the rebar that I was talking about uh, before. Those will be bent over and will be incorporated in that pour um, and the reason why these are not done yet is because obviously we just poured them and stripped them but they have to wait until we frame these structures first and then after everything's framed we'll be able to pour all this flat work and get it all nice and then we'll be completely finished with the house but that has to all happen after we frame the deck of the house and have all the walls and stuff up all right we're inside uh, first thing we want to talk about are our vents that we went with. Um, they basically are like a two season vent. You can close them from the outside in the winter time and then you can open them in the summertime to create ventilation in here. Um, they're strategically placed throughout all of the crawl spaces. Um, this is a pretty good size crawl space. I mean, we're going to hopefully use this for some sort of cold storage. Um, something similar to like a, a root cellar type of situation to maybe help store stuff. But we will have our well pump and our pressure tank and all of our filtration for our water. All that's gonna be staged down here as well as you know running all of our duct work and all that typical stuff you'd see. Um, here's one of our penetrations for the walls. And uh, this is where our water line from the water tanks will be coming into the house. So that is a penetration through the wall. There's several of them. There's one on the very back wall that leads to our septic field. That'll be a four inch line. 
And then we also have another one here for a, for a septic. And that's for that back bedroom over there. You can see the other corresponding uh, with the proper slope from one side to the other. You want to have a quarter per foot fall. So that'll be for that back bedroom over there. And then we also have a water line uh, for the bathroom over there. A little bit lower because, you know, our backfill is going to be about here. And we want to be at least two feet down because in, in our area, two feet is about the frost line. So we want to make sure that the water is going to be well below the frost line. So we, we actually had to move that down uh, before they poured. Um, but yeah, here it is. This is a very big space once you get in here. And, uh, super happy we'll be building a wall on top of this concrete footer. We'll be just doing a, a two by four wall. We'll bolt it down and then we'll run our floor joists and they'll sit on top of that. But, yeah, it's huge. I mean, monstrous. I'm so excited to start doing our next steps and getting everything ready and oh we it's have a our, lot of work yeah we have our work cut out for us oh yeah but well that'll do it for this one so we'll see you guys in the next one peace